Hey, y'all mind if I, <sighs> y'all mind if I rank some Elden Ring weapons really quick? Okay, cool, thanks. Just, you guys mind if I put Moonveil on here? Everyone, everyone cool with that? I'm not gonna tell you which one it is yet, but I'm just letting you know it's, it's gonna be on here. Cause of course it would. Are we cool? Okay, all right, thanks. Yeah, the boss ranking video kind of got some attention and I have 200 hours in the game and can't bring myself to stop. So I'm just gonna keep on keeping on with the Elden Ring stuff. It is a pivot from my usual content. So maybe if enough people start watching these, we can ditch the ranking videos altogether and make the upgrade to challenge runs. We also just added an Elden Ring channel in our Discord server not too long ago, so as long as you're courteous with spoilers for people who haven't beaten the game, feel free to come in and blow it up for us. Number 10 is the Karian Knight Sword. You get this weapon from that one caravan you see patrolling around the leftmost side of Lyurnia next to the Sorcerer's Isle. This weapon is obviously outclassed by some of the more optimal weapons in the game with more versatile weapon arts and better scaling, but I'm pretty sure 90% of us did our very first casual playthrough with this weapon. It's the perfect battle mage weapon that has decent scaling with intelligence and strength and dexterity if it's fully upgraded. Not to mention the carry and grandeur weapon art is a straight up fuck you attack against enemies that are staggered or coming out of an attack animation. It's not spectacular, at least it's not the most spectacular weapon on here. It's not even in a lot of people's top tens I would presume, but I felt like I should at least reserve a spot on the list for this one just because it's like a high school heartthrob. Hundreds of hours later into the game when I get bored and start building my own spells with a cheat engine bullet editor or something, I'm still gonna look back on my Karian days and think, yeah. Yeah, those were, those were the good times. Number nine is the God Skin Peeler. Twin blades in this game are cool as shit. You find this weapon by putting down the God Skin Apostle in the Windmill Village in the northernmost part of the Altus Plateau. Its physical damage is a bit on the dog shit side when it starts out, but its scaling is incredible when you start pushing this weapon into the 20s. It's not a weapon I would see myself using that much, but I'm also a slut for int dex builds, so I guess that doesn't really mean much. The Black Flame Tornado weapon art sounds amazing on paper, but when you put into practice, you remember it takes half a fucking TV season to watch up and you actually cared about not taking damage when it was being used against you. So you did the rational thing and ran away from the attack. Most of these trash mobs have no concern for their own preservation and they just start running towards you when they see you. So if you start charging this thing up, you better make sure there's at least a football field's distance in between you and whoever it's eventually going to hit here in the next five minutes. Again, it's outclassed pretty easily by other weapons on here, but who else would be able to say they fell a dragon with nothing but a giant wine bottle opener? Number 8 is the Reduvia. It's no secret that bleed builds are one of the most broken ways to play this game since every enemy that isn't made of rock or space metal gets hit with an extra chunk of damage for every 4th or 5th hit. Coupled with a nice viscous splattering effect that sounds like someone filled a balloon with chili and then spiked it into the floor. You get this weapon by dying to the bloody fingered Neregis in Limgrave and then trying to fight him again only this time with a scripted ally to tank most of the fight for you. Or I guess you can just kill him outright. You can... You can do that too. The Reduvia is another borderline broken early game weapon, and that is an emphasis on the borderline. It's an absolute monster when fully upgraded if you're building an arcane character, and it's got some massive bleed buildup with melee attacks, but its weapon art gives the player some extra ranged options, making it one of the most versatile early game weapons you can find. The range sadly isn't that good when compared to other weapon arts and spells that basically do the same thing in ways that leave the Reduvia outclassed by the late game, but with an arcane build, I can easily see this dagger carrying players through like the first half of the game until they find a decent replacement. Number seven is the Bloodhound Fang. You get this sweet looking great sword after putting down that one boss in the Limgrave Everjail that thinks he's an Outrider Knight from DS3. Unlike the Outrider Knights though, this guy actually gives you a pretty cool weapon drop that remains serviceable even in late game areas. It's got some surprisingly great scaling for an early game weapon. The Samurai or Vagabond archetypes might get the best out of this weapon because of how well it scales with both strength and dexterity. It becomes just a tank at plus 10, and we all love ourselves an extra bit of bleed damage because if there's one thing this game's need more of, it's, it's, fucking, it's fucking bleed damage. Like the Karian Sword, it can't be infused with any other Ash of War you find, but I'm not sure why you would even want to think about replacing it, because Bloodhound's Finesse is hands down one of the coolest and most elegant weapon arts I think this game offers to melee builders. It's got that old wolf curved sword energy with a bit of Karthus milk ring on the side that obscures your character during the final attack. I can't really imagine it holding a candle to weapon arts like the transient poise breaker or the holy golden ass crash, but it does the job pretty sufficiently, and it never does bad damage. 
Number six is the Erd Tree Great Shield. This one is just mean. I never want to hear someone say sorceries are overpowered again because this shield is like firewall protection amidst a sea of Trojans. The 2% of you that didn't skate right past Double Tree Sentinel and into Landell ended up being rewarded with potentially the best great shield in the game. The only good one, in fact. This weapon has been the centerpiece of some of the game's most ridiculous anti-sorcery machine gun builds in PvP, and I think of all the weapons I'm putting on this list, this one is probably the most unexpected for me, if only because this shield is solid evidence of just how creative this game's community can actually be. It works as a pretty reliable counter to spell spam, but it has the capability to be used offensively, and nothing beats the look on your friends' faces when you set yourself alight with the fire's deadly sin and turn this thing into a giant repeating magic ballista. This thing just destroys everything in PvP just due to its lack of counters. Whoever thought it was a good idea to have this thing proc on self-damage should be thrown in jail, and you better strike while the iron's hot because I'm calling two weeks tops before this weapon art gets sledgehammered. Number five is the Hand of Melania. Hey, look at that, another blood weapon, fuck's sake. You'll start to notice this becoming a theme for the rest of the video, just FYI. Melania has one of the greatest boss fights I've seen in all of Souls, and the fact that it still remains one of the greatest after introducing in one of the stupidest, most ass-tier, meat grinder, Virgil-looking million slash L2 spam bullshit I think is a testament to FromSoft's boss design or at least how huge their balls were when making this fight. The Hand of Melania is a bleed katana, yes the floor is made of floor, that has exceptional range and a uniquely spectacular weapon art called the Waterfowl Dance. It does exactly what you expect it to. It takes the power of the L2 spam and places it in your very hands. It has some incredible damage if all the attacks actually land, but that's made pretty difficult due to the skill taking an entire anime episode to finish its follow-up attacks, and you can be taken out of this thing by someone sneezing on you too hard, so. I wanted to put the Black Blade on this list somewhere just because I thought the weapon skill was cool, but I think at least visually this is one of those tomato-tomato situations. Both are excellent at taking down huge clumps of small enemies, and both will get your ass kicked if you try to use it on big boys boys with big boy poise. Number four, the Halo Scythe. This is hands down the best scythe in the game, like by miles. This weapon skill would be like if you said to your friend you wanted to go outside and play Ultimate Frisbee, but then you told him to just go stand in a corner while you start throwing dinner plates at his head. Like most of Elden Ring's weapons, the one thing that decides where it falls on the bullshit scale is the weapon's assigned skill. And Mikola's Ring of Light is the weapon art that makes the Halo Scythe one of Elden Ring's most overpowered arms you could possibly get your hands on. But just in case, let's just tack on some of that good old bleed damage. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Why does every weapon in this game have bleed damage? The Halo Scythe can be looted off of the Clean Rot Knights in the Shaded Castle and in the Swamp of Aeonia. It's a pretty ravenous consumer of FP, so if you don't have at least 20 mind in the tank, you can burn through your whole mana bar in a few quick taps. I guess that can be a small argument that it's more balanced than it seems, but if you're good enough to actually take down one of the Clean Rot Knights early game, you can pretty much damage cannon your way through the rest of Kaled 20 levels lower than the game tells you you should. The Ice Rind Hatchet. Holy f Fuck. Do you know why people use this shit in speedrunning? Little Aggie and Distortion are the only two runners, to my knowledge, currently who have sub-60s on the board, and it's not even a slight coincidence that they're both abusing the shit out of the same weapon art, which is the infamous, the coveted, the all-destroying Hoar Frost Stomp. A floor-crawling wide arc of ice that deals initial contact damage, and then a follow-up where the actual damage hits. The stat scaling barely even matters because the stomp damage is affected directly by how upgraded the weapon is. Man, I'm tempted to just put footage of various endgame boss fights with no commentary and just let this fucker speak for itself. This shit is like Skyrim on launch day broken, okay? I was taking down endgame bosses at level 46 using nothing but this weapon art and I fucking suck at this game. It can hit the same enemy multiple times if whoever you're targeting is dumb enough to put their entire face in front of it, meaning it can proc in a single use in certain situations. It's going through walls and shit and it barely uses any FP per use so you have the capability to spam this attack no matter what your mind stat looks like. This is why easy mode discussions feel so one-dimensional to me anymore. Look at what's happening on my screen right now. This isn't even a cheese strat, this is just expired yogurt at this point. Number two, the Moon Veil. Hey, here it is. Surprising absolutely nobody. The Moon Veil gets one of the highest spots on my list. An int dex weapon with bleed damage. 
Are you fucking- Does Miyazaki wake up every morning with balls this huge? I just don't even know where to begin with this weapon. It's the perfect storm of broken and awesome that everyone feels guilty enjoying. Everyone knows it's more busted than your phone screen against a hardwood floor, but that's never gonna stop people from spamming magic waves at everything dumb enough to charge at you in a straight line like they're practically bending over for you for that well-timed R2. The sword and the magic wave that comes after it deal their own separate damage, making this katana a true melee weapon through and through, despite its impressive of projectile range. You're liable to throw anyone into an instant stagger if you're close enough to score contact on both the weapon and the projectile, and that's if the 1300 damage doesn't one-shot them anyways. This thing is apparently king in PvP right now, but I don't think I understand why when the Great Shield Ballista meta exists and you have spells that can literally parry other spells. The Moon Veil may be strong, but this game's introduction of spell parries kinda trivializes it. Just grab a shield and slap a good old Kari in retaliation on that bitch and BAM! You got yourself a moon veil counter. Good luck at PvP. The Sword of Night and Flame requires some high intelligence and faith stats, but instead of explaining to you how worth it the payoff is, I'm just gonna put in some b-roll of the weapon art and let you imagine all the fun you can have with it. <laughs> Holy nutballs, this thing is ridiculous. Royal Revenant keeps patty caking you to death? No problem, just shove some heat vision up its ass and watches all your problems vanish into thin air. The weapon skill on this sword, it, it, it cannot be beat, I'm sorry, it can't. It's fun, it's broken, it's hilarious. It, it's the Twitch streamer weapon, honestly. This sword was designed solely to see the amazed reactions of the people that used it for the first time. I genuinely believe that. It's an all-purpose weapon skill with a moonbeam that can focus down one thing in particular and a wide sweeping fire arc that takes out smaller mobs in large groups. It functions pretty equally to the Twin Prince's greatsword weapon art from DS3. Its wind-up time is just long enough to not be effective in PvP, which means getting fried by it can be a pretty embarrassing way to lose a duel, but it does just enough damage to everything in PvE that you just, you just don't give a shit. Who cares? It's got probably the coolest design of any straight sword and all without the guilt of feeling like you're cheesing the game with bleed or frostbite or any of that nonsense. I apologize to all the Black Blade, Dark Moon Greatsword, Wing of Estelle, and Jar Cannon mains watching this because if I'm being honest, a lot of these weapons were tied for like the number 11 spot if there was one. So consider all of these honorable mentions. Like I said in another video, top 10s are hard just because of how much cool shit is in this game. And that's assuming I don't come back and update this list again in like two months when my opinions have inevitably changed. If anyone was curious, I didn't throw up Moon Veil and Ice Rind as the top three just because they're currently meta. I actually enjoy all of these weapons weapons a lot, even if some of their weapon arts are complete bullshit. Every competent build out there has the potential to be a little overpowered, and I think that philosophy has a lot to do with what makes Elden Ring so fun. Except pure strength builds. You guys, you guys are kind of fucked. I'm sorry.